Are you a fan of knobs? Well, I'm a fan of knobs, and Logitech sent us over their knob, and I've been playing with it all day. This is the MX Creative Knob, or console, depending on your pronunciation. It also has a button interface that you can customize for different software, different macros, similar to something like an Elgato Stream Deck, but it also has a knob with other customizable buttons and uh, another dial up here. I love dials like this. That's not bad, actually. I imagine there's probably more friction or more torque once you plug it in. So this is the button interface. So there's a USB connector right there, USB Type-C. There's a stand here that comes with it, and I guess it goes like that. Oh yeah, and it holds it in place pretty well. So you could easily just have this. You know, this is actually, it has a friction base right here, so it doesn't move. That's pretty cool. That was one of my issues with the Stream Deck. It would just slide across the table. This stays still. Let's see what else they got. Oh, and there's the cable. And there's instructions right there. And one thing I noticed is this box or all this packaging has like zero plastic. It's pretty cool. Like this is very environmentally friendly. Now, getting to the important stuff. So unlike this guy that requires a cable, this one is completely wireless. You got AAA batteries. So like I said, it's wireless and you're not having a lithium ion battery that will eventually die and then you'll be stuck with effectively e-waste. You have a standard format and if you didn't want to keep buying AAA batteries, uh, you can get rechargeable batteries and toss them in here. That's what I've done with a lot of my stuff like that. So we got customizable buttons here, 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 and here. I did talk to Logitech. I believe they change based on the software that you're using. So all together, you get nine buttons on this one, and plus four buttons here, and the two, well, the two knobs, the one dial and knob here. Now you also have these two buttons here, which are used for switching between different configurations. So yeah, you have nine buttons here, but you can have even more macros and different commands built in and set up, either customize or downloading them through Logitech themselves. And they've integrated with a lot of different programs like Adobe and uh, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. There's quite a few. You can also just custom build it yourself. So I'm a video editor and a professional knob enjoyer. So I've been using other knobs like this one. This is the Contour Design Shell Express. They make a couple and they haven't really changed much over the years. Uh, this is my personal knob. Uh, and dial, it's clicked here, which is something that I always wanted. So I could go frame by frame, as well as accelerate and decelerate backwards and forwards. And then I had the, you know, five custom buttons up here. It worked, uh, but it was very limiting and kind of got dated. I also used the monogram dial, you know, modular configuration system. This looks a lot cooler than it actually is. I had difficulty deploying it from day one. It has your knobs here. They're all modular. You can configure it however you like. At the end of the day, if it's not working for you, it's not gonna work. So, shall we give this a try? Yeah, we will. I'm gonna press the sponsor button right there. Zydax. If you're not into the hassle of building your own PC, that's okay. The experts at Zydax can help you pick out parts, put everything together, run extensive quality control, and then ship it directly to your doorstep. Their X6 gaming desktops can be customized with the latest and greatest components, like the 9800X3D and 9070XT, all packed in a sleek case, like their Onami with its curved tempered glass and dual chamber design. You can even get custom laser etching, printing, or LEDs to make it truly yours. So don't wait, pick up your dream PC today using our link in the video description. We got After Effects, we got Audition, we got Illustrator, we got Photoshop, we got Adobe Premiere Pro. Yes, I wanna install all of them. Oh, looks like it's doing something already. Uh, Finder? Nothing, okay. Uh, oh no, it brings me to Finder. It, okay, yeah, that's, that's kinda cool, that's handy. Uh, emojis? Oh, there we go. Uh, that's not that cool, but it's something. Uh, screenshot, okay. 
that I like. So let's get into the more interesting options though. So let's customize keys. So we got toggle full screen. Okay, I actually kind of like that. Save, import, I don't need import. Let's replace import with add crop. All right, let's give that a shot. So we got everything plugged in, mostly set up. However, there's one more thing you gotta do if you're using it with Adobe Premiere and probably other video editing software too, or just software in general, but you gotta enable it as a control surface right here. Let's say we want to like ripple delete. Oh, it's right, it's there. It's a simple macro you can set up yourself on like with keyboard shortcuts, but having it here on like a visual interface, you'll never have to like look for it again. Maybe you're working with a different computer and you don't have your keyboard shortcuts. Getting keyboard shortcuts in Premiere from one system to another, even Windows to Mac is impossible. Having something like this, a lot more straightforward. I wanna try this add crop. What does that do? Nothing. Okay. Is that because I need to click on a clip? Yeah, it added a crop. Damn, that's cool. So effects, we'll just pull up the effects uh, menu so you can select different effects there, which is pretty handy. Effects controls will just pull up your effects controls. So sometimes, especially in Adobe Premiere, these can get lost really easily. And uh, having a quick access button is very handy. So these switch between different uh, customizable menus. So you can have like, actually, there are 18 options here. 18 buttons that you can customize and probably more. Let's go into the software again. So yeah, you can just keep adding pages of buttons and you can get like, you know, you know, fill them up however you like. There are a lot of, oh, this is more than I expected actually. But what does the knob do? So just like the creative keypad, the creative dial pad also gives you fully customizable options. Right now it's controlling volume. I'm gonna configure it with Adobe Premiere. Let's let's see what it does first, all right? So I'm in Adobe Premiere, and yeah, this is a jog dial. Uh, I am a little disappointed this doesn't have clicks. This dial right here lets you zoom in and out, uh, and you can configure that too to do other things. It looks like you can control certain things with it. I have a uh, position on the x-axis here. And yeah, it's uh, moving at 10 pixels at a time. This is a niche situation, but the point is, is that you can change it to do stuff like this. So if you need to do a repetitive task a lot, maybe uh, reframing or uh, maybe even scale. This can do that for you. And that is pretty cool. And it's kind of cool that it shows up here on screen too, whenever you're doing something. So you know that you're doing a task. All right, I'm, I'm impressed. It looks like you can do the same with the jog dial, but I am going to keep it at that. Let's see if we can make it clicked. I see no obvious area where you can make it clicked. Uh, this right here, this, uh, what did they call it? Actions ring. This is the coolest, probably one of the coolest parts of this product. I imagine there's plugins you can get that can do something similar. It's mostly set up right now for color grading. If you've used Adobe Premiere, color grading can be a little bit annoying sometimes. Going into the Lumetri color menu and having to kind of dial everything in like that, or, you know, opening this uh, little, yeah. This, this, it's lots of steps. Right here, you press this, you can increase exposure. You can go back, adjust your tint. You have a lot that you can work with. You can have a lot that you can configure and it isn't like programming macros to make it perfectly how you want it to be. But given the form factor, and the, you know, feature set and simplicity of it. This is probably the most I've been excited about using a control interface with while video editing in a long time. So at $200, uh, it's priced around the same point as like a, a low end loop deck or an Elgato stream deck. But this knob, this knob changes everything. And the actions button is also very handy taking this on trips for like remote editing would be excellent. You know, if you're limited in space, 
Most people these days are editing on laptops. It's just so convenient to have like a small, simple control surface that you can bring with you that actually feels good to use. But you know what else feels good? Liking, commenting, and subscribing to Short Circuit and checking out some of the other videos. There's one where Dan and this other guy uh, check out analog cassette tape players and whatnot. It's a great video. Go watch that too. Have a great day.